first, bud. And I told you last video we are going to run back over here to the deed, or actually come over to the deed. We are now at Wisdom's Forge. Again, if you look at your event window when you come into a deed, or an area owned by another player, you'll always show that it shows when you get into the deed and when you leave the deed. Now, the reason why I keep on going over this is because it's very important that people recognize when they're coming and going. The reason being is that if you don't know where you are, when you try to do certain actions, you may end up not being able to do the actions you hope you would. Oh, great. The server is not updating. One thing that Worm does suffer from sometimes is a little bit of lag. And it's not specifically Worm, it is Xanadu. And that's because Xanadu is four times larger than any of the other islands. So, for the most part, it's not that big of a deal. But I just entered into Wisdoms here and it's not showing it up yet. There we go. So we might as well talk about it. Sometimes you get a little lag. Uh, whatever. You get lag in any game that you play sometimes. So here we are, Wisdom's Forge. This is by no means the final outlay of this deed. Just to let you know the size of this deed. From that token there, it is 20 tiles that way, 20 tiles that way, 20 tiles that way. And right now we have a building on the other side of this palisade fence that we can't work with yet. We're trying to get rid of. But once it's done, it'll be 20 tiles that way. So here we are. You just got here. I can't show you the getting invited process because if I try to alt-tab out the spud and invite Wisdom's Forge in, it ends up giving you a big purple screen because I'm not a license holder of XSplit yet. And I really don't think you need to see that, but it's pretty easy. All they do is they type in here in this bottom chat screen here. All they do is they do V, which is village, invite, and then name. And then that'll send out an invite to anybody that's on the server. Doesn't matter where you are. You could be as, long, as far as Xanadu is concerned here, just to make sure this is correct. You can invite somebody from one of these other servers. So when you do a village invite, you can only do it for this island of Xanadu. If you're wanting to do one for Independence or one of these other guys, you actually have to be on that server. I know that sounds silly, but it's a good clarification. So you can't invite your friend from Independence to come over here. He has got to drive over in a boat and actually get on this server before you can actually invite them. But once you invite them, a box will pop up in the middle of the screen and ask you if you want to be a part of the village. Not a big deal. But after that first box pops up, a second box is going to pop up. And that pop up box is going to ask you if you want to teleport. There is a one-time option in Worm to teleport to a new deed that you're invited to. Well, we're only 50 tiles east of the starter deed, so we don't need to teleport. So we just canceled that. So the first thing I'd like to talk about in joining this new deed with us, or any new deed, is that there's a there's a series of skills that you want to learn as a new person. And the reason why you want to learn these skills is because you're not going to want to stay on the new person deed. You're really not. Everybody has this itch to go out and be Grizzly Adams or, you know, to go out there somewhere and establish a deed and, you know, make your mark on the land and, you know, go west, young man. That, that kind of a thing. Everybody's got that itch. But it's good to have a good starting point. It's like it's a training camp. Something to help you establish some skills so that when you do go out there, you can be self-sufficient, have some defenses in place, have some skills in place so you can make the things that you need. That's what we're here to do. We're here to help you establish as a starter deed those skills. So the first skill I want to talk about is farming. Farming is a very important skill. There was a cooking update that was brought out of Worm not too long ago called Update 1.3 which is massive. There are now over 500 known recipes, 500 known recipes in the game. And these recipes will give you what is called affinities. And what an affinity is, is that on these skills that we have, an affinity allows you to gain 10% extra experience when you're using that skill. So when you eat a food, 
it'll tell you what affinity, it'll be random, that you get. So a lot of people will make foods a certain way so they keep on getting the same affinity. And then up here, next to these boxes, which I'll talk about in a minute, you'll get a little square that tells you the name of the affinity. So making your own food is important. Finding an affinity that works for you for the skills that you're trying to level is important. Why? Because less time leveling skills and more time doing what you want to do is always more fun. Since we're talking about this real quick, as a brand new person, your aggravation distance to other monsters in the game is reduced, meaning that if they could aggravate you at eight tiles, they probably aggravate you at five tiles. So you get a little bit of a pass. Also, you'll have the food, which we talked about. You get a decreased need for food and drink. Basically, you don't use as much. And you get increased healing, meaning that there's a healing tick that goes to the server every 10 minutes. So when you get damaged 10 minutes later, it will heal you even faster. Because we know that as a new person, you're definitely going to run around and get your bahooty kicked. It's just going to happen. That's all right. It's part of being new. So just to let you know, you do have these three things as well as a beginning person. So let's get into farming. Farming is very, very relaxing in Worm. Primarily what you're doing is doing what is called tending. So what it is with tending is you open up your inventory and left click, double left click your rake of birch. And while we're doing this here, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. You equipped what's called a tool belt. Instead of having to hit F3 and open up your inventory all the time, you can left click a tool bring it over to this tool belt, right click the tool belt and save it. Now you have nine different tool belts within the tool belt. So it's like those games that have multiple different attack functions that you can use and you have different bars for each attack function. Well, this is, this is similar. We can have a function for farming, one for blacksmithing, and one for leather smithing. I mean, you can have quite a few. And then this one comes with two slots. So it's a beginner tool belt. You can go all the way up to nine slots. So I'm going to save tool belt one, and I'm going to save the rake there. So now I don't have to open up my inventory again. If you put a shovel in there, a hammer in there, a carving knife in there, as this gets longer, as you are able to afford, as you go a longer tool belt or bigger tool belt, it allows you to put much, many more tools on there and then provides the ability to have multiple layers. Uh, it is an absolute, <laughs> I absolutely love it with my main character. He has nine, nine slots and I have multiple tool belts within those all filled up to help out so there's the first thing you should know about working with tools if you can put it on your tool belt also just to let you know with this heads up display you do have the ability to left click move stuff around i don't know why i did that you can even move your chat stuff around i'm sure this is all common knowledge you guys and again, if you want to shrink your text boxes, just double left click on them. So now I've got my rake here. Now, Worm does give a visual indication of when a field needs to be tended. Now, it doesn't call it tending, it calls it farming. And you can look at it visually and tell. These rows are straight. Straight rows do not need to be farmed. Those are straight. Well, this one looks a little bit crooked, so let's right click on it. Nope, that's okay. And don't harvest the field until the field actually tells you that it's ready to be harvested. Now, because you're brand new and your skill is so low, you have to go over here and you kind of have to right click on each tile to find out if it needs to be farmed or not. As you get to a higher level, the mouse will actually tell you whether or not it needs to be farmed or not. I think this one needs to, okay. So you see how this one's all crooked? These rows aren't straight, you can farm it. What farming it does is it gives you farming skill. It also gives you some body skill and some soul skill. Here we got some farming here, I did some farming earlier. Gives you rake skill, uh, the, basically a rake skill. The more rake skill you have, the faster you farm. This one definitely needs to be farmed. So I'm not going to farm the whole thing, but, you know, with as much as many fields as we have here, you could raise your farming pretty fast. And the reason why you want to raise your farming is because what farming does is it allows you to harvest the crops and one, get more for the harvest and two, get a higher quality 
for the harvest. And the higher quality meal that you can make by putting different ingredients together, then the longer the meal lasts and the longer the affinity lasts. So the power of the meal is in the quality of the meal. Now, this also brings up another skill which you've used with, har with farming when you're cooking meals. And this is cooking. I don't want to get too far into it, but it's called hot foot cook. Hot foot. <laughs> Not hot foot. Hot food cooking. So you can do hot food cooking. So farming is pretty, it's pretty intricate. It's intricate. Now, I'm going to stop right here. As I've been jibber-jabbering, I told you guys before that this game is a stamina-based game. And I was about to complete that action with no stamina. If you complete an action with no stamina in this game, your skill gain is nil. Zero, zilch, zip. You never, ever want to complete an action without stamina left. So, that's, so you know, I did it. I've been playing for eight years, and I get yik yak. And because I'm such a new character, the amount of stamina that I use for one farming action is pretty large. I mean, I'm use what 24 percent of my bar but as your stamina body stack goes up you will end up using less and less now you know there's a tipping point where that doesn't matter after a while but these fields definitely need to be farmed so farming is very relaxing you can sit here and the way that you can figure out how many different farming actions that you have without getting all complicated, it's just hit B. B is a crafting menu, which we haven't got into yet, but you have three actions. As you end up getting certain body stats up higher and higher, that'll go to four to five and to six, but I'm telling you that getting up there is a lot of actions. So we have multiple different crops that we're farming here. We just farmed on cotton there. We just poked potatoes, and then we've got wimp, and we've got corn, and we've got onions. Now, the secondary to farming is that when you get to a point where you can harvest, and unfortunately, the Steve's brand new, so this is a, this is literally the first crop that we've put in. So I, I'm not at a point where I can actually show you what a harvest is. But what'll happen is that you'll see these crops get tall. I mean, the corn will get tall. You can see it in the wiki. You get tall corn, and then as your skill gets higher it'll tell you whether or not it's ready to be harvested or not. When it is ready to be harvested, what you'll do is you'll just activate your rake again, you right click it, and you'll harvest it. When you harvest it, it'll turn this tile brown again, no crops will be in it, and then it'll take this, whatever it is, and put it in your inventory. So now your next step is to replant what you just harvested. Now on a lot of these crops, replanting what you just harvested is simple. You just double left click on one of the ones you just harvested and put it back in the ground. Corn is that way, onion is that way, and potatoes are that way. You don't have to do anything special to plant them. You just double left click and activate one and replant it. But cotton and wimp are a different story. So the way it works with cotton and wimp is that they're not considered a food crop. They're considered a utility crop. So on these guys, what will happen is that when you harvest one, what you'll have to do is you'll have to take as many as you want to replant and you'll have to crush a certain amount of wimp or a certain amount of cotton in order to get seeds back in order to replant them again. So I only have cotton up here right now. I think I did all the wimp for. But if I come up here, first thing is that wimp and cotton are not stored in a food storage bin. They're stored in a bulk storage bin. If I take one cotton out of here and I want to get a seed out of it, I right click and I pick seeds. It's the exact same thing for WIMP. You right click a WIMP and you crush it. Now, again, if you have multiple different seeds or multiple different cotton that you're wanting to crush, you can double left click on one, shift left click on another one if you've got a whole list, right click on the whole pile and then pick seeds for the whole thing at once. There's another way you can do it as well. Uh, this is this is the problem with having all this knowledge of shares. I get halfway through it and then I remember I forgot something. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> 
There's another way that you can pick multiple seeds at the same time as well. If I wanted to pick all four of these at once, I could double left click here. I could double left click, activate there, shift here, right click, and I could pick seeds. I can do it that way. Or I can bring up my crafting menu. I can take my cotton and put it in here, it shows four. I can combine it, combine it there, and then I can right click it and pick seeds. For every kilogram of cotton, it's gonna give me a seed. I don't need four cotton seeds, but you can either do it the double left click way and highlight it, or you could squish it in the crafting menu and then go from there. Now you're going to find that there's a lot of stuff that you can get from foraging, which we showed the other day. Actually, I didn't show it. I apologize. I was talking to somebody else. Now it looks like Pad was busy fighting hellhounds, but I just foraged this and I got lettuce. So lettuce you can plant. Cucumbers you can plant. You can forage in all these grass tiles and find a huge amount of different items that you can plant. Most of the items that you find are going to be like berries or mushrooms or lettuce or cucumbers. You can also find cotton out there. You can find different things to help you out. They're going to get stored one of two ways. They're going to get stored in a food storage bin, which a lettuce will go in. Or they're going to get stored in a bulk storage bin, which is primarily cotton and wind. Also, on here you see we got raspberries. We also have pumpkin seeds. Pumpkins you have to crush in order to get seeds. Onion, garlic, barley. Barley you have to, with rye, you have to crush it to get the seeds. So just experiment with the different ones and find out what you have to do. You also get cooking spices from foraging. That's where a lot of them get found, is running around and foraging. But this is just the basic intro to farming. So... I encourage you to do a lot of farming, get your skills up. Also with your skills that you're going to get up is you're going to get body. You're going to get mind skills. You're going to get nature skills. The skills in Worm don't just level up one individual skill. They're all tiered into each other. They all, they all are one part of one unit. So whereas one skill that you get might give you a little bit of something, another skill that you get doing something else, for instance, like digging, might give you a lot more of that. But this is just, for right now, an intro to farming. And again, if you guys have any questions about Worm and you're in game, you can do slash T puncher or slash T like this. You can do slash T spud. If I can spell spud. Or you can do slash T puncher. I'm usually on one or the other. And this will directly open up a chat window with me. So I'm going to talk to Spud. Spud's not online. But if you want to talk to the Spud or Puncher and in Worm and you want to ask any questions, I'm more than happy to help out. So this is just a little mini intro to the farming in Worm. I'd like to thank you very much for logging in and listening to us today. And we hope you come on down and have a great day. Spud and Puncher out. And Wisdom Forge. There's too many of